How would you say there are different ones or others? Thank I'm, you. I'm glad you brought up Phil Fisher because he is a terrific mind and an investor. He's probably in his 90s now, and uh, but his a couple of books he wrote in the early 60s roughly uh, are, are, are classics, and I advise everybody here who's really interested in investments to read those two books from the earlier 60s. He's a, he's a nice man. I went out to 40 years ago, I dropped into his office in, in, in San Francisco, a tiny office, and he was kind enough to, to spend some time with me, and I'm, I'm a huge admirer of his. The, uh, the criteria that we use for selling a business that we own control of are articulated in the annual report under the ground rules. So in terms of businesses that we own, uh, we have set forth, and I direct you there, we've re written those same ground rules every year since 1983, and actually we had those in our head for decades before that. Uh, and we have this quirk, which you should understand, and we want our shareholders to understand it, that even though we got offered a price that was far above its economic value as we might calculate it going in, but if we got offered a price for that for a business that we have now, we have no interest in selling it. You know, we just, we don't break off the relationships that we develop simply because we get offered a fancy price for something, and we've had a chance to do that sometimes. That may help us, actually, in acquiring businesses, because both of the companies that I've committed to buy in the last few weeks, uh, both of them are very concerned about whether they uh, have found a permanent home or not. And people who build their businesses lovingly over 30 or 40 or 50 years frequently care about it. That a lot of people don't care about that, and that's one of the things we evaluate when buying a business. We, we, we look at the owner and we say, do you love the, you know, in, in effect, we ask ourselves, does he love the business or does he love the money? Nothing wrong with liking the money. In fact, we'd be a little disappointed if most of them didn't like the money, but, but in terms of whether the primacy is loving the money or loving the business, that's very important to us. And when we find somebody that loves their business and likes the money, but loves their business, we are a very, very desirable home for them because we're just about the only people that they can deal with of size where we can commit that they are going to be part of this operation really forever and, uh, and, and be able to deliver on that promise. I, I tell sellers that the only, the only person that can double-cross them is me. I can double-cross them, but there's no, never going to be a takeover of Berkshire. There's never going to be a management consultant come in and say, I think you better do this. There's never going to be a response to Wall Street saying, why aren't you a pure play on this or that, and therefore you ought to spin this off. None of that's going to happen. And we can, we can tell them uh, with 100% assuredness that, that for a very long time, that if they make a decision to come with Berkshire, they, that, that's, that, that decision will be the final decision as to where their company resides. Um, so unless of those couple conditions, which are extremely unusual, uh, that are described in the ground rules uh, prevail, we will not be selling operating businesses, even though someone might offer us far more than, than logically they're worth. Uh, the question about stocks, is we're not quite with Phil Fisher on that, but we're very close. We, we love buying stocks where we think the businesses are so solid, have such economic advantage that we can essentially ride with them forever. But you've heard me talk about newspapers earlier today. We would have thought uh, newspapers 20, 25 years ago, I think Charlie and I probably thought a daily newspaper uh, in, a, in a single newspaper town, which practically all are, is probably about the solidest investment you could find. We might have thought a network TV affiliated station was about as solid as, as you could find. And they were very solid, but events have, uh, over the last 20 or 25 years, have, have certainly changed that to some degree and maybe to a, a very, very big degree. So we will occasionally reevaluate uh, the economic characteristics that we see 10 years out from the ones that we saw 10 years ago and maybe come to a somewhat different conclusion. The first 20 years of investing for me, or maybe more, my decision to sell almost always was based on the fact that I found something else I was dying to buy. I mean, I sold stocks at, you know, at three times earnings to buy stocks at two times earnings 45 years ago because I was always running out of money. Now I run out of ideas. I've got a lot of money but no ideas. And, uh, you know, I'd, I'm not sure which is better. What do you, what do you think, Charlie? 
I think you were way better off when you had 50 years ahead of you <laughs> and less money. No, I, sh I still think I have 50 years ahead of me, Charlie. <laughs> You want to elaborate any more on selling? Yeah, we almost never sell an operating business, and when it does happen, it's usually because we've got some trouble we can't fix.